you're welcome what's up family and friends good morning and welcome to this beautiful day welcome to the woke nation our nation of factual truth where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear without favor and without faint no matter how we feel sometimes we feel oh you know should I continue with this or not? Nah, unless you are not prepared. I was prepared for this before they were conceived. So they cannot silence me. They cannot make me stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not doing it for their cheap popularity. I'm not doing it for their money. I'm not doing it for their likes. If I'm doing it for their likes, why am I wasting my time not preaching about God, about Jesus, about Mary, you know, to attract those that attract those that follow them. They have big followers. So I'm supposed to be speaking about them by now. Or oh, approving all those they are men of God, you know. At least they will say they used to follow me though. So but they, I changed my belief. I switched from belief to fact. I switched from faith to knowledge, I switch from fiction to reality, I switch from religion to reality. It's very simple. It makes your life better. And of course, the last post I just made before coming here, it says, um, you stop attracting certain people when you heal the parts of you that once needed them. As a Christian, I was sick. As a preacher of God, I was sick. As a preacher of Jesus, I was sick. As churchgoer, I was sick. As a man of faith, I was sick. As one who had belief system, I was sick. As one who believed in invisible God, I was sick. As one who believed in spring being, I was sick until the knowledge of factual truth healed me. Then some people that I used to attract before, they begin to go and it's good. It is like garbage or a load I was carrying, unnecessary loads I was carrying. Now I carry them no more and I'm living my life with joy, happiness and peace see it is your life you have to live this life uh, let me say it again you have a mother 
you know, the day you were born, they call it um, umbilical cord, right? The cord that connected you with your mom or to your mom, that cord was cut off. The reason why that cord was cut off is because you have no long, you no longer need to be connected to your mother or to your parents to live. It is your life now. That's why what they did to you was wrong because nature, uh, as we're supposed to be naturalized, when somebody is born, they're supposed to let us grow up the level that we can choose what we like and what we don't like, then they can teach us. But no, they cut us young. They force us, they beat us to believe certain things, to go certain You know how you were crying? The first day they wanted you to, wanted you to go to school, you were crying. The first day they wanted you to go to church, when you begin to run around, you were crying. Because those things are not actually part of nature. Many things we have accepted as our way of living, our lifestyle, they are actually against us. And that's why what has been limiting us. Some of you, we, we find out that some of the great inventors were not trained in any school. Some of them were dro school dropouts. It's not what they learned in the school that they used to become inventors. Because those things are designed to clip our wings. They don't want us to fly. They don't want us to shine. They don't want us to do great exploits. So they program us in those religious institutions and the secular or political or academic institutions. They, they condition us in them all. So, uh, Abigail said, Biko, can you upload the video you made with the old man in the village? I've been looking for it, but can't find it. Oh man, it's gonna take me another time to download it because I delete, uh, like when I share my videos, I delete them. But if you have this app, this app can help you to be downloading people's uh, whatever you want online, be friendly, yeah check it the friendly app if you have that app you'll be downloading my video or any video you see on facebook with if you you sign in or your facebook um, your facebook account you sign in with your facebook account there so any video you see you can download it you know so but i also edit my video with my facebook account on my regular facebook you know i think it's mainly maybe people living in America or Asia, or maybe it depends on the type of phones sometimes that that have such app, you know, like you can edit it and all that. So that's it. So some of my videos, I don't actually uh, like have them unless like you join the Woke Nation uh, WhatsApp, where I also download every of my video. You know, I even in that place, like, I used to cut them you know, for them to be uploaded. The, the, the app for downloading videos on Facebook is friendly, friendly Facebook app. Like if you type on your site, type, like, on, go to Google and type a friendly app or for Facebook, it will come up. Uh, let me let me snapshot this and make it bold so you see how we look. Mm. So with this you can, yeah, you see how the app look friendly. See, this is the app. With this app, you can friendly. You see it friendly. You can be downloading any video, especially you that is not living in. Africa, or some places in Africa like Nigeria, where you know most of our people there, they don't have enough data to be downloading anything. So, the the, the only video they like, are they don't even download it, or at least the one that like, like one minute or two minutes. But you know, we're going. That's why we need all this in Africa because this will wake many Africans up, and uh, they join us. So today I want to speak on which power of God, you know, I hear people talking about power of God, I'm beginning to hear some pastors now, or some preachers now, or some believers now, telling their members or their people, you know, God delivered you from coronavirus, God who delivered, God delivered who, 
No, God did not deliver anyone from coronavirus. Anyone that have coronavirus, they are the one that deliver themselves. Like if they did not die, they quarantine themselves. They 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 begin to you know follow the guidelines that the the experts say they should follow. Some of them are you know taking some whatever medicine they have. So there is no God have not delivered no person in this coronavirus pandemic. No person. Okay, see Trump. Trump is a Christian. He believes in God. He believes in Jesus Christ. All that. But you see, instead of him encouraging people to wear masks, he wants people to die. But he's waiting for vaccine. You see, he said vaccine will come. But he said like a miracle, it will disappear. <laughs> what is the miracle? Nothing. And that's why in the whole world now, America, the whole America that Africans worship has become worse in this coronavirus pandemic. China is better than them. Uh, Italy is better than them. Spain, all the countries. The other countries you think they are following America. No, America is following them behind. <laughs> <laughs> and it's there, but you know, people will still be, uh, some people think I'm, I'm support, I'm, I'm speaking against Trump so that uh, I will, uh, I will tell people to vote for Biden. No, you know my stand, right? All the politicians, are politicians, I don't care. But the issue with Trump, he speak, he speaks against my people, and he speak against people. He lies a lot. I don't care who you are, whether whether I like you or not. Just speak the truth. Be honest. Uh, I was one of the people that used to say, you know, Trump speak. No, I know how why Trump speak the way he speak, because he was a rich man. A rich man don't speak like a poor man. Even when Trump and uh, when they used to compare Trump about Obama, I say no, Obama was a poor man. Obama was not a rich man. They say, see how Obama worked with his wife. Rich people don't work with their wife as poor people do. No. Rich people don't treat their wife. It is even in your book, you that believe. He said the rich are mean. Rich man is mean. You, If you are not mean, you cannot be rich. No, no matter how you try. For you to be rich, you must be mean. You say it's not, not true. Because if you are nice, everybody around you will be rich. That's what makes you a nice person. A rich person is mean. And they can do anything for their riches. They don't care about your life. Trump is the example. He knew that this coronavirus is deadly. But he keep telling people, no, it's not a must. You wear masks. It's not mandatory. Blah, 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 blah. Playing it down. And he know how to switch things. Because he's a real criminal when it comes to, uh, some people say, mafia. Look at him. I, don't, I will say the same thing about anyone. I judge people by what they say and do. I don't care about how you try to paint it. You say, uh, that's bullshit. I have unfriended some people that think I hate Trump. I don't hate Trump. But if Trump hate my people, I hate him too. He calls some countries from Africa a shithole. But he is the product of, of the people that make Africa. So I'm still part of the people that are making Africa so. See, there's no white man that have any right to talk of anything bad about Africa because they are the cause of the condition in Africa. None of them. But Africans are, most Africans are stupid. You know, when Trump said that, so yeah, he's right. No, he's not right. He's stupid for, for saying that. He was insulting my people, insulting me also. Why did he shut down okay, people that want to come to America? When his father was coming from Germany, did they shut down border against him? No. They recall people that were trying to come to America. They called them mobs. They called them criminals. He said, no, you put army there. He said, I want to build a war against them. Because your God chose him. Your God is wicked. He's wicked. Everyone, I, I, listen, anyone that tell you they believe in miracle, don't have anything to do with them. They are stupid. Anyone that said they believe in miracle, <laughs> they, will, they will be doing stupid things and that's it. Okay, let me speak on what I'm saying. Man. <laughs> you know me, and I mean what I say. I will not say something to apologize tomorrow because before I say it, I know what I'm saying and I will tell you this is why I'm saying it. I show you, I give you the proof why I'm saying it. Okay. Then you are free to believe whatever. Yeah, I believe him. He's this, he's that. And most of you are not even living in America. Those of you that are living in America that believe in him, because you are a religious idiot. 
That's why. Here, <laughs> watch your Fox Fix News. Which power of God are these people talking about? Telling people that God delivered them from coronavirus so they will do all worship God, whether praise God, whether which God delivered them? Not God. They shut down. I, 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 the last video I made about um, family war, where I, 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 I show us the video of uh, Edahosa preaching from Matthew chapter 10, talking about Jesus giving his disciple power. He said that Christianity is not religion, it's power. I said, which power? So, like, I think that, 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 that's the, the best place of this message I want to share now. Which power are these people talking about? That power is only real in the Bible. Jesus gave his disciples power in the Bible against unclean spirits to cast them out. And that's the only one he picked from there. How about healing all sicknesses or curing all diseases? He left that one apart. They're talking about power. How man of God have power. You know, God, don't touch man of God. You know, don't play with your life. That's bullshit. I've been playing with your God. Who are you? If I can play with your God, who you worship, who are you? Which power are these people talking about? This is where they get this bullshit from. Welcome to Bible study also, partially tonight or this morning. In Psalm chapter 62, verse 11, he said, God has spoken once. Their God cannot speak, uh, speak twice because it is once. He was the day he was made, they made him and made up those words. Said, God said, God said, Okay, where is that God? I know he has only spoken once. You see why they hold the Bible, you see why they hold the Quran, you see why they hold Torah. Psalm chapter 62, verse 11 God has spoken once. A God that can speak only once or that has spoken once is not in existence anymore. That God is dead. That God never existed at all. He said, God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. He did not say, I heard from God now. Twice I have heard this. Heard this from who? He said, he heard people saying that power belongs to God. That's what people say. But in reality, power belongs to no God. Power belongs to people. Then people give their power to certain people. They call authorities. Then that people now have the power. The people have the power to lock down the whole country. The people have power to lock down the state. You see the nation of Israel. Israel, you, you believe you're worshipping their God. They are now going for second lockdown. And their leader, their leader, their leader now apologize for their failure in handling the coronavirus pandemic. But you still say, God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That God never existed. And they are fooling you. This is where you will say it is Old Testament. Yeah, that's where they get it. The power belongs to God. Okay, see where they put it in the New Testament. In the book of Revelation, the book of their confession, their final confession, is Revelation chapter 19, verse 1. Hear what he said. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven. Multitude, people in heaven, saying, Hallelujah, <laughs> Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and the power belong to the Lord our God. They stole it from the Old Testament and put it in the New Testament. To say that power belongs to God. Which power belongs to God? In the book of Psalm, we are in Psalm chapter 62, verse 11. It says, power belongs to God. They put S there. But in this one, they put belong. <laughs> belong to God. To the Lord. And they added the Lord this one. Because they added Jesus. Their God has spoken once, and they keep hearing this from people, from people, not from God. A God that has spoken once, and that, can, that cannot continue speaking, that God is dead and useless in reality. Who has spoken? When they tell you, who, you say God has spoken, where is that God? Which God are they telling you has spoken? They say God of Israel, which Israel? The Israel that, that, that just started in 1948? The Israel of the Bible never existed. It's a fictional state as you have Wakanda today in the uh, um, Black Panthers. 
the Israel you read in the Bible, all the stories, all the things about Israel you read in the Bible, all of them are fallacy. It's not, it never happened, it's not really incident. There was no Jesus in Israel, there was no Abraham, the others bullshit. There was no uh, uh, Moses or that. No. Those things are stories. The truth is this. God is speechless. No God can speak. No God has spoken. Stop believing their bullshit. It is people. No God, no God can speak anything. It is humans that speaks. And that's why they gave you the book. Tell you that. Animal spoke with, not with God's voice, with man's voice. It is man, it is human that have voice. God don't have any voice. It is people that are God's voice. Anyone that tell you God say, is a lie. That means a liar. It's, a, it's lying to you. That's why every prophecy is a lie. Because they tell you God sent me the prophecy. Prophecy is a statement, you can make better one. Somebody made a prophecy. You can make a counter it with your own. Say, I see, I see evil in this land. You say, you are lying. I see good in this land. You see, you cancel it. The, 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 the prophecies uh, that Christians make, it doesn't affect the Muslims. It will only affect those who believe them. If you don't believe their prophecy, it's useless. Just as their God is useless. Which power belongs to God? Tell me. No. Zero. There is no power that belongs to God. I use my power to lift this up. God cannot lift anything up. Can God do that? You are God. Even the God you worship, the God you praise, the God you say all power belongs to him, that God cannot lift a bottle of water up. But you are bragging. But you can do it. Because you... Ah, the real God. You were born to create things. You are not created to create things. You were born. You are not a creature. You are a living being. Being. B-E-I-N-G. You continuously live in the circle of life and death. Which power belongs to God? Even in the world today, you will see that the power belongs to those who have weapons. Weapons of war. If you don't have weapons of war, you are weak. That's why Africans are weak. They don't have weapons of war. They don't have nuclear weapon. China has it. America has it. Other world powers, they have it. How about us? And your Bible. I, said, I will still use Bible to show you that it's the people that have weapons that have power. Power belongs to such people. You can run your mouth. I see in Africa, you can go run your mouth, say you are a, a, a revolutionaries, like as some of them want me to do. Okay, come home now and do this. For you to kill me, waka. Come home. You think I'm, 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 I'm stupid. I, you talk, but you don't have weapon. Boom, boom, they kill you. Nothing will happen. You see, if they kill you, the world come and see how they're cheating. You, know, you are stupid. And you believe in God. Chukwaki Kabiyama is our God. Uh, Jehovah is my God. Allah is my God. This one is your God. And you are calling for United Nations. Come and come and see what they did to us. Come and see how they're killing us. And uh, we are, we, we are, we, 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 we are, how do they put it? Uh, we are not, we are unarmed and they're shooting at us. They're killing us. Where is your God? Where is your God that he say he created everything? Say nothing will happen without him uh, uh, approving it. So your God is one that approved us uh, killings. See how they are killing our people. Because our people keep making noise without weapons. When that young man started, he went for the right thing. He came to America here and asked for weapons. Our people turned against him. Weapon for what? Weapon you want to say? No, weapon is for protection. If you don't have weapon and have wars, you will go down and nothing will happen. You think this uh, heaven will come down? Which heaven coming down? Are you the one that put it there? Judges chapter 1, for you to see who has power, not God. Let me use the Bible to show you who actually has power. The power belongs to man. The power belongs to people, not to God. Judges chapter 1, verse 19. 
How many of you have been? I mean, many of you have been reading your Bible. You, you know, you read past this one because you would like when I was a Christian. I was, you know, when I was uh, reading like normal Christian reading. I was looking for where it's telling me something I want to hear so I can preach. Okay, but when you when you are studying, that's another thing with study. If you're really serious with studying, you know whether you accept it that time or not, it's registering in you. That's why you should do so. Verse 19 of Judges, chapter one, or chapter one. He says, so the Lord, that's the Lord, means the owner, God. So remember, it means the slave masters, the white people, right? He said, the Lord was Judah, and they drove out the mountaineers. The mountaineers, they drive, drove out the mountaineers. That's, they defeated them. But they could not drive out the inhabitants of the lowland because they had channels of fire, of iron. Don't you? Remember, your God have chariots of fire, but he could not defeat people with chariots of iron. Chariots of, you bring your chariots of fire, chariots of fire, we cross it. The people that, the mountaineers, they, def, they defeated them. But the people that live in the lowland, they're supposed to swallow because they have weapons. They have chariots of iron. With their God, Judah and the God failed to defeat them. No matter how you brag, God is with me, God is this, God is that. People with weapon, Papa, you're dead. There's nothing your God can do to stop them. Power belongs to those with weapons. Look at Israel, you're talking about they want to go for another shutdown. Where is God of Israel? Where is Jesus Christ that say he's a Jew? Salvation come. Salvation is of the Jew. And that's why you are dying. African claiming to be Christians, claiming to be Muslims, claiming to be, to be Jews. Bullshit. Power of his word. That's what they will claim. The power of the word of God. The word of God is power. And they will quote a place like Psalm chapter 107 verse 20. He said he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. And they are building hospitals today. The power of his word is only in the book. Not in reality. If God sent his word and he healed them and delivered them. Why are you building hospitals? Why are you even praying and going to lay hands? Let God send this word. A God that is waiting for you to pray or for you to call him, for him to send this word to heal anyone, that God is useless. That God is man-made. And then in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, he said, where the word of the king is, there is power. Oh, you used to preach with this place a lot. So that's why he made that declaration. I curse you. Which, who made you king? Who made God king? Who made Jesus king? They have no power. It is us that have power. If you don't preach God, God does, will not exist anywhere. You, it is people that are spreading God. It is people that are spreading Jesus. They have no power. The power of his word. The power, he cannot send his word to convert people. Then you have to go for evangelism. You have to go and keep, uh, you know, following, following people up. You know, we came last week and preached to you. We are inviting you this Sunday for you to come and worship with us. And they see the glory of God. Bullshit. Where is your God? Your God is supposed to send his word and convert them. Since you believe in conversion. You are winning so. Why not your God? Winning so, you're supposed to be like your father in heaven, right? That's why they say you should pray for your enemies, so you should be like your father. So, if your father can send his word and heal them, send the word for them to be converted. Let your God that God send word, say the power of his word. I saw something also in the Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Caterpillar. 
Buddhism. What's that? Hear what he said in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1. He said, Then I returned and consider all the operation that is done under the sun. He said, I return and consider all the wickedness, all the evil that is done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, the oppressed still crying out in tears Why God is sitting in heaven laughing at their plight. But they have no comforter. God has given us comforter. Holy Spirit is my comforter. You are lying. Holy Spirit cannot comfort you. You know how many people you have buried in your family? You know how poor your family is? You know how wretched your family is? You know how you are suffering? December is approaching. And many of you already decided that you are not going because coronavirus has robbed you the money you're supposed to go and spend. Many of you will not travel this December. No, of course, you know, transportation will be so high. You will not go. Hear what he said. On the side of their oppressors, there is power. Let me read it again. Come on, open your eyes. He said that he, he saw the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of their oppressors, there is power. Africa, is this not you, Africans? Is this not you? You are shedding tears every day, but you have no comforter. Yet, on the side of your oppressors, there is power. Are you not the one that's supposed to get that power so that you'll be comforted? Africans who wake up, power belongs to no God. We will have to take that power back. You once had that power, even greater power than them. You must restore that power because without power, you will never recover your heritage. You can run your mouth all you want. You still see your artifacts in their museums. It's when you get power, you will go and take them by force again. They took it by force from us. They stole it by force. We will take it also back by force. They tell you, forgive us, forgive us. Of course, forgiveness makes you a stupid person. Because when you forgive, you don't demand for justice. I saw the wickedness, the oppression that is going on in the world. The tears of the oppressed. And this oppressed believe in God, worship God. But yet they have no comforter. But on the side of the oppressors, of their oppressors, there is power. Is it not the same thing you see many Africans today believe in? That God is on the side of the white men that enslaved and kill our ancestors? Is he not still going on till today? We are crying out tears. Yet there is no comforter. But those that are oppressing us, they still have power. Africans, restore your power. You have voodoo power. You need that power that white men scared of when they first come in contact with us. We need to restore that power. It is not a spiritual thing. It's not a religious thing. It is our science. It's a natural thing. We have it as the original of the real people, human beings. How about power over death? Is there any God that have power over death? No. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. You know, I like this. I like this. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. When Edahosa died, and I was pastoring that church that break away from one of his branches in Lagos, Divine Grace, uh, this is one of the places the 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 the, the 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 general overseer, the owner of that church or founder of that church, when he was talking about it, the whole side, preaching on the pulpit, this is the 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 verse of the of the Bible he used, and now it make more sense to me. He said, "No one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit." Remember that story. There's no such thing like spirit except us. We are the spirit. The truth is, this no God have power over us. No God have power to retain us. No power. No God have power to 
relegate us. No God have power to do anything to us or for us. And no one, including your God, has power in the day of death. Anyone that tell you they raised the dead is lying. They did not raise the dead. They resuscitated somebody that were in coma or was um, a paralyzed kind of or was uh, maybe induced or maybe they take something or something happened to them. Like sometimes my eyes will be turning, maybe I didn't eat well, you know, then my eyes will be turning. I know what is happening to me. All I need, I will, I will eat food and take some, like uh, I have more train or like today at work, I went to my manager and said, oh, give me, give me, uh, add v, you have add v, right? Give me eight milligrams. He said, oh, come on. I said, okay, give me 600. I have a home. When I go home, I would, I take it. And when I eat and drink it, I start feeling good. Then you see how, how many of them is faking the resin the dead because they have to without faking it their faith is useless faith is fake and the only thing that works with faith is fake knowledge cannot work with faith fast cannot work with faith reason cannot work with faith it must be fake that's why they lie in their testimonies they lie in their miracles they lie in their practices they cannot stand with the truth there's no truth in faith he said, no one has power in the day of death. There is no release from that war. And the wicked will not deliver those who are given to it. God is wicked. You are given to God. God will not deliver you. Have you seen anyone delivered by God? No. They are the one that delivered themselves and they say, God has done it. Which God? It's in your Bible. The resurrection power is a lie. You hear them. Reservation power, reservation, especially Easter period. That's when the reservation power, reservation power, power we do this, power we do that. Without you believing those bullshit, nothing happens. If you say you experience anything that time, it's because you believe. It is your believing power. You are the one that gives power to that God. You are the one that gives power to that Jesus. You are the one that gives power to that prophecy. You remember um, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Bullshit. <laughs> Which power of his resurrection? I mean, you haven't buried somebody this year. Some of you will bury somebody this year. They are Christian. Don't tell me you have not had a, a Christian or somebody that believe in God that have died this week or last week or that we die. You will hear it next week. They keep dying. Dying of coronavirus. Dying of other illnesses. Where is the God? He said, there is a resurrection power. That resurrection power will come upon you. The, the preachers are criminals robbing you with such wars. There's no God that has power over death. There's no power that have Death is not a bad thing. They, they, created, they, they make you believe that death is bad. Death is your end. It's not. You're supposed to wake up death. And now you are living in the fear of death. Yet your God cannot stop that death. Some of you have buried your parents already. Where is God? Your parents are young. But they died. Some of you did not even meet your parents. And yet you are standing on the religion of your parents. Hey, yeah, I'm a Christian. You know there is God. How dare you say there is no God? Because you are in America. I don't blame you. Bullshit. Need to know me also when I was there. No matter whether I, am, I was in my village, I, it was, I will still turn out the way I am today. It's not the place I am. It's the state of your mind. Mentality is everything. What are, another one, they claim power in his name. Come on. There is power. Oh, there is power mighty in the, in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood. That's a lie. Quit blood. You become a vampire by faith. You are drinking blood of Jesus, sprinkling the blood of Jesus. And after you say you are against rituals. There is no power in his name. Then you read the story of uh, the story of Goliath and David. David and Goliath. 
David said, you came against me with the weapons, but I come against you in the name of the God of Israel who you defy. Then David used catapult and threw a stone and he pierced his forehead. He died and uh, okay, bullshit. Where is Goliath's head today? Where is Goliath's bones? They tell you David cut off his head and take it to their museum. Where is it today? <laughs> They say, oh, archaeology is finding big head. Big head. <laughs> Ask them for proof. Where is the head of Gloria? Where is the head of Gloria? The score. Is the score now? Let me show you. It can never it can never exist anywhere. Talking about the power in his name. Which name? Then they put in the New Testament. They said, God has highly exalted him. That's in Philippians chapter 2, 9 to 11. And giving him the name that the, the, the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. But things in heaven, things are earth, things are for where? Did you see coronavirus bow in the name of Jesus? Do you see any person that contacted coronavirus that bow in the name of Jesus? Even those that have gloria. You see believers that have gonorrhea. You see they have uh, HIV AIDS. You see they're having all kinds of sickness and diseases. And you say there is power in the name of Jesus. If there is power in the name of Jesus, no church, including Catholic Church, will build a hospital for any reason. The reason why they are building hospitals, the reason why they are using medicine, is because there is no power in Jesus. There is no power in God. Which power are you talking about? So every me shall bow before I, I fuck that Jesus. I dis, Jesus bow before me. God bow before me. I don't bow before them. Somebody wrote some bullshit in the book and you want me to live by it and live an unhappy life in the name of imaginary God I have not seen or can see. You see converted Africans hooked on the power of the name of God of Israel or name of Jesus Christ. Africans who are suffering, they are wretched, they are very poor, suffering, oppressed. Yet they are believing, they are God. God loves me. Little changes happen in their family. You see, they need them. Father, I thank you. Oh, Jehovah, Jehovah. Oh, how will you love? But where was Jehovah when you are suffering? A woman was driven out of her, her husband's house because the husband is dead. And these people that killed the husband that drove him out, drove her out. Now, one of his sons or one of his children buy a car. He said, Father, thank you. Oh, God. You are stupid. Good God. Your child went abroad and struggled. He didn't know what he did. And you are saying he's God. Good God. Whatever you are doing, make sure you put God first. That's what the poor parents always tell their children. That's the money you will give them. <laughs> the people that give them money don't tell them put God first. Because they know money comes first. It's money first. You take which God. And that's why when that money comes, that's what makes you happy. God cannot make you happy, but you say, no, it is God. I must give thanks to God. God is the one that makes it possible. The fear of the sword, which is Jesus Christ that brought death in our, in our lives, makes the people bow at the word and the name of imaginary God and Jesus. The fear of death. It, if it's not for fear, you will not see any African saying Jesus or God anything. Bullshit. They are living in that fear, especially fear of death. Oh, another power they brag about, they talk about power to, re, to transform or punish, punish somebody. Our God, our power. And you know the three major people they always use in the Bible to terrorize people. To make you force you to believe in their God. Their God can transform any person. Their God can punish any person. The first person they always use. Pharaoh. You see Pharaoh the king of Egypt. You see how God dealt with him. God brought plague in the land of Egypt. And God dried him in the, in the sea. It never happened. The Pharaoh they were talking about. 
his mommy is still in Egypt. No Pharaoh drowned in the sea. No Pharaoh drowned in this. You know, Pharaoh to leave his, his palace and chase ordinary people? No. He got people all over the place, even across the sea. He will just send me an error and they go tell them, bring these people back. As it does, never happen. Everything about Israel is fallacy. Stop believing them. God, that with Pharaoh. God will deal with you. Which, which God? See Boko Haram killing you. See those one you call Islamic uh, uh, insurgents or whatever killing you. You see Fulani husband killing you. Where is God doing what? Another person that we use is Nebuchadnezzar. God gave him the heart of beast. He became a, a, like an animal eating grass. A God that turned a human being like you into animal is not worthy of your worship. You must kill that God. You must trash that God. God supposed that's supposed to fix a human being, turn human being into animal. Is it not what they have turned you into? When you are talking about conversion, you are talking about God making you a king of Nebuchadnezzar, turning you from king, being king into being sheep, animal. King Nebuchadnezzar now begin to eat grass like animal. That's what you are doing. You are eating grass like animal, eating what people wrote, telling you it is God. Ah. Then the third person they always use is Herod. King Herod in the Acts of Apostle chapter 12. The man made speech. People say this is the voice of God. It's not voice of man. They say God, you know God is a jealous God. He sent his angel and slapped the guy and the worm ate him up alive. That's bullshit. And that is the God you claim to have. He can transform people. He can punish people, but he cannot solve your problem. He can transform people. He can punish people, but he cannot stop the wicked ones from oppressing you, making life miserable to you. Look at you living in Africa. You don't have steady power supply. Have you seen me making life, life, life broadcast here and the power went off? Last year, when I was in Nigeria doing live broadcast, you know how many times the neighbor took light? And because I was in a hotel, they put the light back on. And you'll be talking about your, what your God can do. When will God give you good roles? When will God give you good things? Give you health care? He cannot do that, but yet you are bragging. I am serving a God. You are stupid telling me that you are serving a God when you are living in Africa suffering. If, and if you are not living in Africa, living in another people's land, where they are, when they have at least better thing, you can at least enjoy 50% of it. You pay for something and you are enjoying it. Now, this is my old phone, right? You know, I have the, the promise, right? Now, I, they want to send me replacement. You know what we go through in Nigeria to have such thing in Nigeria? Replacement, <laughs> which replacement? No refund of money after payment. <laughs> Did they have that such plan at all? You pay for something in Nigeria, you are not enjoying it. You keep paying an electric bill, yet you are not having electricity. You continue, and you still go to church. Pray, God, you are so good. God, you are faithful. Mm. The spell of work of fiction has kept many people, gullible people. To the word, name, religion of imaginary God that does not exist. It's a spell. That's why it's called ghost, ghost uh, gospel, ghost spell. They cast that spell on you. And because you believe in spirit, in ghost, that spell is on you. But when you begin to embrace knowledge, you see how that spell will die and you will live free life. I welcome you to the Woke Nation. Join us. Let us continue seeking and spreading the knowledge of factual truth. You have that power. You have the power to know. Don't let anyone put you down, keep you down in believing. It is time to know. We are no longer in the age of believing. We are in the age of knowing. And it is when you know the truth, that knowledge of the truth will set you free. The truth is not Jesus Christ. It's not religious truth. It's not spiritual truth. It's factual 
truth based on reason based on reality based on facts that's what you need and when you embrace it you will see how free you are and you will begin to enjoy your life in a higher level peace